First, thanks for you all being here. Our team is uh, excited to be playing baseball again together this weekend to uh, you know, make it to the Super Regional round and be in the final 16 is we're, we're very, very grateful. Um, our team has worked hard for this opportunity and looking forward to uh, what's in front of them uh, starting tomorrow. Uh, certainly, we're familiar with Duke. Um, you know, we get, get the opportunity every year to play them on our side. We're on the same division in, in the league. Uh, so certainly we're very familiar with them and played them here in April. And, um, you know, just excited that there will be an ACC school in Omaha, right? Um, one of the two of us. And uh, we've got the utmost respect for them. Uh, they've got an outstanding team. Coach Pollard is a, a tremendous coach, has done a great job at Duke. And... You know, we're just uh, excited to be back here uh, in, in Charlottesville. Um, you know, I think our the Super Regional sold out in about six hours. That shows the enthusiasm that this community has for what our baseball program is doing and specifically this team. So uh, we're looking forward to another uh, packed ballpark in the coming days and excited to, uh, for the opportunity. Any questions? Uh, yeah, for, for either of the players or both of you, um, Duke's, I'm sure, mantra this week is, hey, we went to Charlottesville and won a series from these guys. <clears throat> Seems like you all are playing even better volume and red hot since that series. What's kind of been your take on, on that matchup and the fact that you guys have already played? You know, I, I think we're just, I think we're playing our best baseball right now. I think, uh, you know, we're red hot, like you said, and, uh, you know, we've had a lot of time to prepare and work hard as a team and just, you know, do what we do. And uh, I think, we're ready to let it shine on the field and just do our thing. Yeah. Um, Coach said earlier this week that uh, what happened in the regular season has nothing to do with what we do uh, for our preparation this week and this coming weekend. And as long as we take care of what we can control and stay focused on ourselves, and that's all we can do and hope for the best. Uh, question about the lineup. It, it feels like the way – Everyone swinging the bat, the confidence you have in each other allows you to be a little bit, a little more selective at the plate. Do you have that feeling like there's not a ton of pressure on any one guy because you know the guy behind you can also get the job done? I think there's a ton of depth in our lineup. Um, you know, we uh, we all like to work early and be aggressive, and and um, you know I don't think there's any pressure for any one guy to do too much, and I think that's a strength in our lineup. I think we have a lot of depth, like I said, and uh, you know we have a lot of trust in all nine of our guys to, you know, do some damage and, and put the ball in play very hard. Yeah, I would say going into the box, knowing, you know, who's behind you, who's in front of you, is pretty. You know, you got confidence in everyone, and it feels pretty easy up there when you know that, you know, if you end up not executing, someone behind you's gonna. And I think you saw that this weekend in regionals, that one through nine at any point in the game can step up for us and make a big impact. So. Um, well, first of all, I tell you, for practice, it was fine. Uh, there were there were no issues. Our outfielders saw the ball fine off the bat. Our infielders did on line drives. I don't think it had any impact at all. Um, had we been able to play a game today, if today was game day, I don't think there would have been issue any issue. Um, I don't, you know, have any knowledge of. Um, what's going to go on tomorrow as far as the weather and, and what's happening. But, um, you know, we'll play baseball when the NCAA tells us to play baseball. It's their tournament, and they, they're the ones that make the decision. And as of now, there's, you know, nothing at all to report. Yeah, Casey, just following up on that, just how did it feel out there today with how the conditions were? I didn't have any issues, and, uh, you know, other fellow outfielders, I mean, we didn't have any issues. We saw the ball fine, like Coach said, and, uh, you know, we're just ready to play tomorrow and uh, do everything that we normally do. Jeff. Brian, what has it meant, meant for the pitching staff to be able to bring in a left-hander like Jake Berry at the end of the game like mm -hmm. he did in both of the East Carolina games? Well, um, you know, Jake did a terrific job in both of those East Carolina games, back-to-back uh, -back days, and uh, he was incredibly efficient. You know, the the big key was in game two, 
uh, the tournament, game one against East Carolina, that he only faced six batters in two innings, you know, and um, and only threw 22 or so pitches. So, um, you know, he's pitching some of his best baseball that he's pitched for us in his in his career. And we have a lot of confidence in him, but we have confidence in other guys as well. East Carolina was a little bit different when you're facing eight left-handed hitters in the lineup. Uh, you will see more right-handed pitchers out of the bullpen uh, this weekend. You'll see Jake Berry at some point as well. But, you know, every game you play, the plan needs to be a little bit different based on the personnel you're playing. But we've got confidence in you know, every guy that we bring out of the, that bullpen to hold the game for us, and uh, Jake certainly pitching some great baseball for us. Coach, uh, earlier this week, one of your former players, Andrew Abbott, making his first major hmm. league start. So he's got to ask you, I mean, you've had so many players, you know, make that jump to the major leagues and do well. Yeah. What's it like for you to just see Andrew out there and have the success he had in the NBA? Well, I'm incredibly proud of Andrew Abbott. Um, he was a warrior in our uniform. Um, you know, we did not anticipate having him back for, for his fourth year with us, but the draft didn't work out his way uh, coming out of COVID. And, uh, you know, we welcomed him back with open arms. He had a tremendous year for us, helped pitch us to, to Omaha that year. And I'm just proud of him. He, two years after wearing our uniform, he makes his major league debut. And what a debut it was to throw six innings of shutout baseball is is incredible. That's very, very rare. Um, I do have to tell you, after after the game, he FaceTimed me uh, f from the field, and um, I started to cry because I was so proud of of him in that moment. It was disappointing I wasn't able to, to be there. I'd been at a lot of guys, uh, major league debuts, if it works into the schedule. Obviously, our priority is this team, but we're just incredibly proud of him, as we all all of our guys. You know, every player comes here first and foremost to win for their team and for Virginia, but they all have dreams and aspirations of reaching the highest level of baseball. And Andrew did it, and I I really believe he's got the skill set to stay there for a long time and be a very successful major league baseball pitcher. Brian, I heard you ask the guys about the depth of the lineup and the yeah. pressure it takes off them. Have you seen that as the years gone on? The, had development of not pressing in the box because you know the guy behind you can get something done? Well, I tell you, in my 20 years here, um, this has been the calmest that I have been with regards to our offensive output, really, um, because I just had so much confidence coming into the year. Um, you know, not only did we have guys like, you know, Geloff returning from last year that had, you know, record breaking years, but uh, you know, really, these guys, two guys sitting to my left and others, this this second year class that's here, they had an incredible amount of experience last year and knew that they would continue to progress and just was excited and am still excited. I am still excited about, you know, our production one through nine. And Casey's right that, you know, anybody can do it at any time. I spoke about it last week that this time of the year, Certainly it takes a team, it takes a group, but it also takes a few individuals to rise up and have big days. And, and we'll do that because we have a number, everybody in the lineup is capable of doing that. Um, this is for the guys. After the last you know, series, a name that you guys mentioned was Brandon Dyer. What's been his impact on the program for you guys? Yeah, he's, uh, he's been a huge mental strength coach for us. Um, he's taught us a lot about preparation and how to approach the game. Uh, we've had several different um, in-person meetings and Zoom meetings with him, and, and his big thing is you know preparing the right way. He's a big sleep guy, eat the right way, and just make sure that you're taking care of both your body and your mind in order to play your best baseball, and he's been crucial for us throughout the entire year. Yeah, I mean, you saw it with Ethan O'Donnell last week. I mean, uh, Brandon Geyer's motto to us that he sends a text message every day is day one, pitch one. And you just gotta take every at bat, every pitch, whether you're on the offensive, defensive side, as you know its own thing, and just be dedicated to the present moment. And that's been working out for us this year so far. So, uh, uh, Coach, uh, going from regional to super regional, you've been in a couple of these. Is there a big difference just in how to play, just because it's a little bit different format? And then also just with the familiarity with Duke, how does that? Yeah, well, it, it is different. It's different than last weekend because, 
you know, certainly we feel fortunate that we went 3-0, and you know. Um, if you fall in the loser's bracket last weekend, you can play a lot more games, four or five ball games. So it's 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 a lot different. And now it comes down to a three-game series, you know. And so you can do a few, few different things from a pitching standpoint than you had to do last weekend. Last weekend you thought about, okay, you know, uh, that's why I got Jack O'Connor an inning against Army because I, I really believe that if we, you know, if we got to Monday, he was going to be our Monday starter. So you think about those kind of things in, in planning. You have to have foresight to navigate through a regional. This is a little bit different uh, from that standpoint, from the management of the club and the pitching staff. Uh, that said, it's, um, it's a series, right? And... You know, um, it, it comes down to winning the series and we're consumed with just the game tomorrow and what that brings us. And then we'll, you know, tackle game two when we get there. Certainly, you know, as I addressed at the beginning, you know, we're very familiar with Duke. Uh, they're very familiar with us. I don't think that that really plays too much into it. It's still baseball. It's about like what Tony said, that it's about what, you know, what we do. Right, and do we execute in every facet of the game? Uh, with that said, we have the utmost respect for the way that they play and their players and their talent as well. Uh, Casey, did you know Anthony could hit a ball as far as he did in that regional game? And then Brian, did you take us through your pitching plays? I have all the confidence in the world in this guy, man. He uh, he brought it that game, and you know I knew he could hit a ball that far. It was just gonna be a matter of time, and the right time when he did it. So I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it was a special moment for it, and he came through for us. So that's that's all that matters. Tony, did you think it was out? Um, so I honestly kind of blacked out and don't remember what happened. But <laughs> when I could tell you that when I was rounding first. Um, I'm not used to those going out to dead center. So when I saw it rolling, I just kept running. And I saw Casey right next to me and kind of got shocked. And then I stopped. And then Coach Mack just kept waving us. So I just treated it like it was inside the parker. So. Hmm. It hit the dead center wall, though. I heard it. Apparently. Heard it from second base. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the pitchers in the bullpen said that it was uh, clearly over. But I, I mean, looking back, I remember the center fielder just laying there sitting and kind of not really reacting, so I guess kind of looking back, I knew it was gone. But we have actually a really unique situation here in, in in baseball, and I address it every time at home plate and with the umpires. Is typically the ball disappears when it goes over center field, right? Because there's usually a separation between what they call the batter's eye and the outfield wall, and the ball disappears when it goes over the. Um, over the fence. Here it's butted up right next to it. Um, at, at one time before Tony uh, played here, the, um, the yellow stripe at one time was actually around the batter's eye. So the batter's eye was actually in play. You had to hit it over the batter's eye. There was about a three-year period that that's the way it was in this stadium. And and uh, that was influenced by our pitching coach at that time, of course. Uh, coach, Mack, coach Mack and him were um, button heads about whether we should have that or not. But um, that's just a little bit of background knowledge of it. Um, the pitching plan is Nick Parker is going to start tomorrow. Um, that's what we're um, consumed with. And, you know, all hands on deck this time of the year. Um, so everybody's available to help us give us the best chance to uh, to win a ball game tomorrow. This for Coach is actually following up for Brandon as well. What yes. kind of impact he's had on the program and what, how did that relationship even start to bring him back? Well, the relationship start, started uh, 21 years ago um, when I went down to see uh, – Brandon Geyer was the first player that I saw as the coach at Virginia. It was about three days after I was hired, I went down to what they call the Commonwealth Games um, and watched all these players from the state of Virginia play. And he hit a home run down there that, I um, uh, you know, it, it was a bomb. It was out of the ballpark. And, and um, we recruited him, uh, got him to come to Virginia. Um, he was a critical player in our first three years here as coaches. Well, he was actually here two, year two through four um, in, in our culture. And he was an incredibly hard-nosed player, came to us as a third baseman, 
And at the time of Brandon's freshman year, we had a pretty good bit for third baseman by the name of Ryan Zimmerman. So we taught um, Geyer how to play left field, and he became an incredible left fielder um, and had a great career here, went on to play seven or eight years, different years with different teams in the major leagues. And after he retired, he, he started his own business uh, that he was very successful at because he learned from people in pro ball about uh, mental training and, and what it takes to maximize your potential as a player and as a coach. Um, he coaches me as well. And so in his first year with his business, I paid attention to what he was doing, uh, what he was teaching and decided this fall that we were going to bring him on onto our staff and hired him to uh, work with our program. And, and he's done some really good things, um, helped some players more than others, right? And so he's just a positive guy that believes in the right things. And it's another voice to the players. They hear from me all the time, right? And it's another voice that preaches what I believe it takes mentally to be successful in this game. Is that why you're calmer about the offense this year? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I tell you, we've had some incredible offensive clubs over the years, and this one certainly matches right up with any of the great ones that we've had for sure. Any other questions for Coach or Sinatra? Is Brandon able to be physically here with the team at any point this season? <laughs> um, he actually was not. He messaged me last weekend before the weekend. Say, he's doing a lot of work with major league teams as well. So he was last weekend, he was with two different major league clubs visiting them. Um, I have not heard whether or not he'll be able to be here this weekend. He just lives two hours away. Um, but uh, I, I don't know about this weekend.